Today we're taking apart an Epson Workforce WF2650 printer. We're going to use a Phillips screwdriver tip for that. So there's a couple of things that are on the outside that can be replaced or removed pretty easily. If you're just trying to get the top portion off, this here. Um, That could be removed as a whole piece or you can just start removing the parts so we're going to remove the parts on the outer on like on the top first so if you're replacing this adf unit you can just push it back open it up push it back over here and that comes out pretty simple it has the adf pickup rollers on them um so these here, if you're replacing those or cleaning them. Now this ADF tray, it has tabs right here and on this side. So go ahead and open it up. Then you can use your finger to push inside portion of this inside or from here and pull it up like that. Then we have this piece. We're going to use a Phillips head screwdriver to get this screw out. Um, let's go ahead and remove the plastics here because we have wiring right here. So this is a duplexer unit. Count comes out pretty easy. Our power and the logic board are going to be on this side. There's a screw right here. If you're just getting to ink pads, it's right here. Remove this screw and then take a flathead screwdriver and just open it up over here. It should just open. First, Sorry, there's one more screw right here. So three screws for, sorry for wasting your time over here. Just got confused, I thought it was just open, but usually they just slide out. I think that's all the screws that we have. So the ink pad box just comes right out. That's where it sits, that's where the tube is. Um, let's try replacing this. So what you'll do is just lift just like that. 
and it comes out it comes right out so you just need to get it from under here and the pickup roller for the main tray uh, comes right out you need to change this piece out um, also try not to damage but usually you just need to replace these if you ever get to a bad pickup roller you're gonna remove screws on the back in order to get to inside of the printer screen is pretty simple two screws here comes right out. Carefully disconnect the cord over here. There we go. Now there's an easier way after you remove the plastic to remove the tray, um, but you don't want to go through all that process whenever you're changing out a tray. So what you can just do is kind of push it right here on the bottom, kind of bend it out, and uh, push it to one side, and then one side comes out, and you got your output tray out. Um, same thing in reverse for anything that you want to put back in. <clears throat> That's for the top portion, but since it's still connected, um, I'm going to remove the cord over here, the screw over here on the front. Get in here so I could disconnect the cords. Um, looks like all of this is just one piece. So what we're gonna do? It's opening. We're gonna remove more screws on the inside here so we could lift the plastic cover. I think there's just these two here and here. Okay, hold it up, right down. Remove the cover. Now we have access to the cords to disconnect this piece and this one disconnects this one here. So though that's wiring for the screen and for the scanner unit. The screw that was attached to this spring support was in here. Um, so on the back side behind the ADF unit. Um, to get to this, uh, the scanner unit, you're going to remove a screw here, and there's a few on the bottom that need to be re removed, and then you have access to, this, to replacing the scanner unit. For the ADF unit as well, there's two screws, should I replace removing it? Let's you lift the ADF unit and see if it can hold it. Okay. Okay. Now this is the inside of the printer. Pretty simple. We have the cartridges right here. I'm going to re remove them. In order to get to our print head, um, so for the print head removal, we're gonna be try to be very careful here because there's lots of wires. Um, I'm gonna prop this to the side to lift it. Let's those back panel off. So 
So just if you're replacing a printhead, just be careful with it. Kind of leave it like this. You don't don't have to disconnect it. There's one screw over here and two in the back that hold the print head down. Need to remove this piece as well. Gently. Now there's a screw here. Here. And up front over there. That will remove. I'll put on some gloves from here on because I used printer and I don't want any ink on my hands. So it just lifts up like that here. It has a cord on one side. Connect it and you can kind of see how it's supposed to be in there like that so this is the print head I'm gonna put this back since we're taking apart the printer we're gonna continue on here we have a timing strip whenever you have a uh, this carriage unit going from side to side like crazy um, it's usually an indicator that either this is misplaced out of the sensor area <clears throat> or that is ripped. Sometimes uh, what I've had is uh, a kid go into a printer and I guess just rip it by accident, you know, just playing with the printer and had to replace it. In order, if you don't want to buy one, you can always put tape on this side. This side really doesn't matter, the clear side, what you put there, because the printer only reads this black area, or the darker area. Um, so it's uh, how I've repaired it before. I just put some tape on here. If it was ripped, I put some tape and just put it through that hole, and it just punched a hole in the tape, um, and it held on fine. Um, there's a power supply right here, connect to the main board. I'm going to disconnect everything from the main board in order to get it out. So, so this is the left side of the printer if you're looking at it, uh, at the front of the printer. So there's a few screws that hold the formatter board down. There's one here, there, let's disconnect this cord that goes to the print head, the carriage unit, and we have a couple right here, A bit tough to get to the this 
do the logic board here because it's screwed in on over here. something that could be done anyway so without breaking anything so you can just pull this back there are also some uh, wires on the way here here and get this here out. So the formatter board is out. If you're replacing it, just open this up and you should be able to get to it from this casing. <clears throat> so that's pretty much most of the printer. Um, like this area is where we pulled out the ink pad. We have the carriage unit. Um, to pull it out so we're gonna remove this screw here So that gives the carriage out, the one that holds the front head, if you're replacing that for whatever reason. Here you go. pieces out now. The screw that I took out here, you don't have to take it out. It holds these springs here. So it's pretty much pretty lightweight. You can feel that there's only some plastic left in here. A couple rods and that's pretty much what the printer looks like on the inside. On the back side we have that out. You have the back a box out here um, so if we were able to help you with this I hope I did it looked a little bit 
that um, I wasn't sure about some things. Some things were a little bit harder to get to since it's all enclosed, but in reality, it's pretty simple. By removing two screws here, you have, you're pretty open to fixing whatever you need to fix here. Either a timing strip or there's paper stuck. Sometimes we have paper stuck here and it won't let this mechanism move and it'll just it, it give you a whole bunch of errors. Um, the last thing is the spring comes out pretty easily and if you have this one broken and you're uh, when you're trying to change cartridges your um, printer top portion will not stay open this is what you need to replace um, and it is pretty simple you just replace that and then when you put the cover back on just put the screw back in here onto the top and you should be good to go yeah this is the open position anyway thank you for watching please subscribe to our channel um, like this video if you do like it share it with other people that may need help repairing this one and have a wonderful day thank you